do you know what I think do you know what I think I'm gonna ring? I'm gonna ring Jane Couch, because I like Jane Couch and uh, she doesn't she don't push stuff in media. Jane Couch. Uh Is that Jane Couch? It's Jane Couch, is that Porky Ross? <laughs> How are you doing? How are you doing Porky Ross? I'm alright Jane, how are you keeping? Well, are you still in Yorkshire? I'm still in Yorkshire, I'm in Rotherham at the moment in my office. See, I'm red and you're white. I know. You're not white Ross and I'm the red. Who won the Battle of the Roses by the way? I thought the red rose and the white rose was Lancashire in it, bored roses. Yeah, well, red, red rose is Lancashire and the white rose is Yorkshire. Oh, right. And then we had a battle of the roses and I'm pretty sure Lancashire won, but I don't know. We'll find out if... <laughs> so, I've been told, Jane, today on the grapevine around the campfire that they're making a film about you. Are they really? <laughs> is that true? <laughs> Is that what it is? So you know like, you go on, you, when, when people watch telly, they watch like Gentleman Jack and Downton Abbey. Yeah. Well, we're going to be watching the final round, it's going to be like a six part drama like that. Who's playing you? Uh, some northern bird, but we're not sure who it is yet. <laughs> Saran Jones. Saran Jones, I was just about to say her because she's from your area. Yeah, yeah, but Saran's. She's in the film and she's the co-producer and she's playing the lawyer or my mother, she's not playing me. Right. It's because she's the co-producer, everyone thinks she's playing me. But she'd be good at playing me, she'd be brilliant at playing me because she's northern and mm. she's a bit feisty and a bit cheeky, a bit like me. And um, yeah, she'd be good but she can't, because she's, she's got a co-producer. So is that her who went with Steve MacDonald in Corrit, isn't it? Yeah, that's her. Yeah. So, I'd like to see her play you, actually, because she'd probably get into boxing and she'd probably take it to another level, wouldn't she? Yeah, she'd be good because she's fit anyway, but she can't because of the age. And, like I said, she's co-producer on it, so she's got to concentrate on getting, on getting it right, because a lot of these dramas, and, and, and boxing films, they're, they're not really how, how it really was. And, mm. and this story's such a massive, like, well, it was history, we made history, didn't mm. we? Mm. And, and it's such a, a, an important part of, you know, boxing that mm. it's got to be right. It's just yeah. got to be right. And there was a few people running for it. The team from Downton Abbey was running for it. Um, and then look out point who do gentlemen jack, jack out bigger. But there was a few others in the running. So there's a, they're obviously um, they're obviously copying on to what a, a great story it's going to be. I'm impressed actually because I've just been looking at your career on Boxrec and you were you were the one that pushed the British Boxing Board of Control for a license for women to box, didn't you? So if it weren't for you, there wouldn't be no women boxers, would there? And did you have any battles with the Boxing Board of Control, Jane? Yeah, I mean, the Board of 
was messing my head to the board of control and I was just like, oh my god, no. I mean, like, but when yeah. Simon Block was there, he was he was in charge when I was there. And we used to have a laugh at that, but they were just so, they just so blinkered. Like, they couldn't, they just couldn't see past their own noses. And, they, and because of the way the boxing board set up, so it's like, like, X ex-judges, ex-policemen, ex-CID, ex-businessmen, and it becomes like... Like that fucking Les Potts? <laughs> no, Les, yeah. Actually, he was always all right with me, Les. Fucking chief of police up here, wasn't he? Yeah, but this is what I'm saying, because of how the board's set up, it's like a little club, and they only wanted what they wanted, you know. They are a bit racist, and they are a bit... Yeah. Everybody knows what happened, but they all just chose to sweep it under the carpet and say, oh, let's pretend this never happened. And then you're looking at girls now and thinking, wait a minute, if I don't tell them what happened, they're going to go through exactly the same as what I went through. Yeah. And you can't, you know, girls are struggling now. But, all right, it's great to see Katie and you know, all the big ones on Savannah. Screen, doing well. But what about, like, you know, there's girls like in Manchester, Tracy, and just had a fight cancelled because of coronavirus and worked her arse off to sell tickets and everything. You know, the, and then where do, where do girls like that go? Yeah. With a big promoter behind them. It's just, it's just horrible. Just what, I, what I find hard to see is... For example, and I don't like to name names, but it's there in statistics. Shannon Courtney is in a weight division where there's two women in Great Britain in her division, so she can't even have an eliminator for a title, can she? Well, this is it, but once they, if they start working with all the, the people that know women's boxing, I don't know why like, they don't want to get involved in it, because I'm not really sure who he's working with. He's had a few, like... He's had a, you know, he's, he, he was lucky with Katie, but then he's had a few bad ones as well on there. Yeah. But, you know, unless they start working with people that know the game and know the women's game, and because there are some good girls out there, they just don't get the call. Yeah. And, you know, I'm a bit like myself. Like, I'd only get a call to go to America just so they could take the belts. They mm. didn't want me to have the belts. They just wanted get me to America, rob you on points, and then take your belts off you, and then see you later, and then you're fucked up on a plane back to England. Mm. And the next phone call you'll get is to be in the phone. Mm. Who was the hardest person that you fought, James? I know what you're going to say. Riker. Louise Riker. For those of you who don't... Louise Riker. Louise yeah. Riker would beat most men in, yeah. in a day. She sparred with, you know, Mexicans that Freddie Roach trained and Manny Stewart. Manny Stewart didn't want to fight me. That's why they only gave me 12 days notice. It was like, are you joking? 12 days notice to fight. She's, she's just a bit, nobody would beat her now, not even any of the current girls touch Lucy Riker. Well, I'm just, let me just say this, Jane. For those of you who don't know Louise, Louise Riker is, Louise Riker plays the baddie in the Clint Eastwood film who get, don't Hilary Swank fall and hit her neck on stool or something? Dude, but like, what is she, she is, she is by any, by a long mile ahead of anybody that's yeah. right now. She, just, she was just before her time. She was just great. I think I was the only one that went the distance with her. I saw your face after the end of that fight, Jane. It brought me heart. <laughs> oh bless like, you. What the fuck? Mm. I was like wobbling all over the ring. I got back to Connor and went to text it. Feel funny. What do you feel like? I don't know. I just feel like weird me. Oh, you'd be alright. Just cracked on. I had to do an eight rounder with her. Just cracked mm. on the other seven. I thought, well, if I'm brain damaged, it's already done, so I might as well just get on with it. How many rounds did you do with her? Eight. Eight rounds. Oof. Yeah, it was an eight round. I lost that point. And she punched hard? Mm. Yeah, I've sparred with a lot of male professionals. 
professionals and she punched out of them some of them. <laughs> Jesus. And but, but that's, that's what's missing in women's boxing today, it's power. Yeah. Most of them, I mean, I, I wasn't a big puncher. You know, Holly Holm wasn't a big puncher. Mm. Um, Louis Muller, Jamie Clanford, they, they were great fighters, but not the power that the men have got. But Riker just had it all. And yeah. if you can find a woman now that's got that power, I think that's what will that's what'll give it that little bit of, wow. Like yeah. They can punch as well, because, you know, Riker could punch harder than some men. Mm. And what? Just never blessed with power. And what? How many, how many belts did you win all together, Jay? What did you win? Uh, five world titles. Five world titles. At what weight? Uh, lightweight and light welterweight. So nine nine ten stone. So you never fluctuated in weight, then? You were an hard trainer. Yeah, no, I was always, I was always, I, mean, I was a very, very hard trainer. Ask anybody. I mean, I train with like an ex RAF. Um, trainer who was a boxer as well so yeah the training was was just intense and as I said in those days I, I could only spar with men um, so I had a lot of hard sparring with people like Glenn Catley, Dean Francis, Darren Dorrington. Dean Francis bless you mate. Yeah nice lad Dean, so sad rest in peace but yeah mm. they all helped me and they all taught me a hell of a lot. Um, I saw you, right, last night on Frank Skinner, but it about 1997 or something. Because that were a massive show then, there were no internet then, were there? Yeah, you had, you had a Keegan perm. See that little shy girl I was, what the boxing world turned me into. I know, when I saw you on there, I thought, she's alright, yeah, she's lovely. <laughs> and Frank, Frank Skinner. You got on with Frank Skinner, didn't you? Yeah, he was lovely first. I'm very old to be fair, like. And they, they, uh, they were doing like 17 million views, weren't they then? Well, yeah, I mean, that's how, I think that's how I got so recognised. It wasn't yeah. for the boxing, it was for going on. Frank Skinner. Frank Skinner, and I say that in the book, it was like, you was this little freak because you did boxing, so you got on all these big TV shows. They didn't, they didn't fucking pay you, but everyone thought, oh yeah, you've been on Barrymore, you're a multi millionaire now. Yeah. Were you on Barrymore as well? And Barrymore, yeah, beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you a clip of it. Oh, brilliant. Oh, I can't believe it, honestly. So, are you not. Rematch as well, he's just called me out for a rematch. Oh, what, Barrymore? Barrymore, <laughs> yeah, he's making a comeback, I think. Is it brilliant? <laughs> And what are you doing? He's like all those boxers making comeback. Yeah, 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 like Lennox. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing now with yourself, Jane? Are you still with Brian? Yeah, I'm still with Brian. Um, in my school, we've got, um, well, Brian's got tipper trucks or like construction industry. Yeah. We're yeah, just enjoying life without boxing, really. It's, it's yeah. Nice. <laughs> It's different. <laughs> well, you see, the thing is, you see, right, because, you see, you know when I started with this five years ago, obviously I've been a fan all my life, but five years ago when I started with Dennis, I were like, wow. And then once you scratch the surface, it's, it ain't really, it's, it's not as glamorous as you think, is it? It's all smoke and mirrors, it's the boxing mm. world. There's a lot of promises <laughs> made, isn't there? And which what best show you fought on, Jane? Uh, I think it was the Naz on the card. Um, I boxed, he boxed Augie Sanchez, was it? Yeah. Yeah, it was a good little fight, that. And um, yeah, it was on the other card of that. And, and we had, yeah, that was a crack. 
You fought on a Lennox Lewis card, didn't you, as well? Yeah, I was on a Lennox Lewis when he fought for Tommy Klitschko, but the Nas bills were, were brilliant because in them days he was like, he was just massive, wasn't he? Oh. You know, and, and to be on his other cards was just even better, it was brilliant. So, yeah, Not Mickey Ward as well, had a, a really nice time with Mickey Ward in New York. I was on, I was on his other card. Is he a nice guy? George Jr. He took my opponent out that before I fought her, so... Who did? He done me with this Roy George Jr. What, he pulled her? <laughs> well, yeah, he pulled her the night before. Who were that? Uh, Leah Mellinger. Did you beat her? Uh, Leah Mellinger. I don't know if he pulled her, but he took her out for a meal so she could have been late. <laughs> and I fell asleep. And I thought, that's handy. She's got... And she looked a bit tired when we got on the ring, so I beat her on points. <laughs> when you're the way fighter in Connecticut is nigh on impossible so I think I must have landed her every round because she was that mack and after being out with Roy all night. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet she was. <laughs> so I love Roy George Jr. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well we all did, didn't we, in the 90s? Yeah, oh, no, he's, he's great. Like when, like I said, when I boxed on his undercard, he was one of the biggest names. In, he was massive, so, wasn't he? It was when he fought Montel Griffin in the rematch. I yeah, yeah, one round. Uh, but yeah, it was brilliant. It was like some great memories, brilliant. But you know, it's just it was so different the way you were treated. Yeah. You know, even even in America, where they accepted it better than here, it was still it was still hard. And what's that girl called from America? Is it Toughman or something? What's her name? I forget her name now. Is she a fighter? Yeah, I'm trying to think of this woman's name now, a white boxer who, who fought for years at Kale K- K- or some a, a tough, a tough firing. Or, I forget her name now, but there's a woman I saw and she'd been fighting for years. She was in her 40s. Fighting. Is she still fighting now? Yeah, she was with Gary Shaw at one point. I'm trying to think of her name now. I always used to see, she fought Ali, Leela Ali. Porky fans, send it to me, I've forgot her name. But she was a right a really a really good fighter. Let me have a look on here, but I'm just gonna get your career up here, Jane, because it's an it, Yeah. Because there were only a handful of you about, weren't there? Irene Tuffhill. Who? Irene Tuffhill. Oh, yeah, 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 I know. I remember her, she was doing alright, then she lost loads on trot. Yeah, she lost her last four, but she was doing alright. She fought Layla Ali, I remember watching it, fought World Super Middleweight, then she lost everyone after she lost to Laura Ramsey, Marce- Marcella Cornejo, Raquel Miller, Anna Rankin. She fought Anna Rankin, yeah, Irene Tuffel, I remember her, but there's, there's a, let me just get you up. Because uh, your career were brilliant. I mean, Frotcher's really up on your career, I don't know if you know that, I think he told you that, didn't he, once? Yeah, he's, he, was he, were really, he were really up on your career. And he That's said, bad. yeah, he said to me, he said, listen, she put it on the, she, if you want for you, nobody, you were 28 and 11, weren't you, obviously? But you fought Holly Holm, didn't you? Let me see what names I remember here, Holly Holm. Well, uh, that's the thing, you fought them in the wrong town, so yeah. they've been in England, they might have got the decisions. You decision. might have got the decisions, yeah, because you only stopped four times, weren't you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you fought Louise Riker in your, let me have a look. Let's have a look. Well, toward the end of your year, you fought her toward the end of your career, didn't you? No, in middle, in middle. Louise Riker, she was never defeated, was she? No. 17. She's amazing, man. You want to watch her? She's amazing. 17 and 0. You'll never see skills like that, power like that. She's 53 this year. Is she? 53. She's 17 and 0. 14 of them uh, all knocked clean out. <laughs> I don't. My God, she can back, honestly. 
But you, you had a fantastic career and I'm glad that you're getting the recognition now. I've got your book, as you know, and I think it's fantastic. Do you remember me saying to you like, uh, at Christmas that it's like a roller coaster? Or your book's like a roller coaster of, emo of emotions. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, I couldn't put it down at, at the time. I mean, I, I, but, I found it all to write because I was going through a breakdown and everything. But I thought, do you know what? I need to just get on with my life. Yeah. There's, there's more to life than boxing. Yeah. You just got to move on, and it did what it did to me. I, I unfortunately didn't understand about mental health when I was boxing, so yeah. we missed the ADHD. We missed everything that was wrong with me, and. Do you think do you do you think you've ended up bitter, Jane, or just glad you're out of it? No, not, not one bit bitter, just glad. Just glad I seen just glad I seen what I seen seen it for it. You was. got to travel, didn't you? I'll always I'll always follow boxing and always you know, yeah. be around it. I, I help a few girls in Bristol but I do tell them don't be a pro boxer. <laughs> you were putting shows on though, weren't you in area, weren't you? Yeah, I had to do everything, I had to do managing, promoting, I had to do it all because nobody would promote me. Mm. It just wouldn't, it, as much as they'd say, oh yeah, you're a great girl, but we can't promote you. It's yeah. just wasn't interested, it was all about money. That's mm. all it was about. Yeah. And I, I really feel for you because I know, I'm, I'm, I'm not stepping out of line here saying that you didn't make millions out of the sport. Is that true, Jane? <laughs> I wish I did. Yeah. No, I didn't. I mean, listen, we were, I was boxing for like three. I boxed Liam Elliger for no money for the world title. And the only reason I did it was to take the world title thinking, well, if I get the world title off her, I'll, I'll get paid for the next fight. And I got fucked on the next one, so... <laughs> Do you remember the, the what, what Barry Hearn said to you when he said, if I'd have been behind you, you this is a famous quote, if I'd have been behind you, Jane, you'd have made millions, and what did you reply? I can't remember what I said. You I said, said you know, you said, I've got it on here, you said, if, I, if you'd have been behind me, I'd have been pregnant. <laughs> That's on IFL. That, that's the ADHD coming out, I can't help it, what I'm saying. Hey, I've got the same problem, we're all damaged, aren't we? <laughs> oh, but do you know what? You just crack on what you're doing, it's like, when the videos first started, it was, you know, it, it was just a, such a unique thing, and now everyone's doing it. It's just yeah. brilliant to see how, how big it's grown, isn't it? Yeah. And do, do you remember when you started iFilm with Rita? <laughs> me and Rita, we didn't, we didn't really start, what, what happened was, um, we had Ricky Allen for a show in, in Bristol, Yeah. and, and Rick, so Ricky, I was doing a promotion here and I was doing the promotional work for him, and we was having breakfast and Carl Leach was one of the guests, and he brought Coogan along with him, mm. so we were just taking the piss going, all right, Coog, uh, fucking hell, are, are you his bouncer? Because he's big and that. So yeah. We, and he was he was a big lad then as well. Mm. So we, we just assumed that he was Carlton's bouncer. Carlton was a right wind up merchant, so just went along with it. <laughs> and then Ray Allen was looking for someone to go to uh, Vegas for the Pacquiao fight for, to look after Ricky. So, so I said, why don't you take Coog and he'd be good. Like, yeah, yeah, all right then, so, anyway, the next thing Coogan was in, in Vegas doing that. Ricky Atten's minder. Ricky, it was Ricky Atten's <laughs> And that's how we all met, and that's how it all started, so... Ten year ago. Look, oh, it was a long time ago now, but... Long ago, I, longer. It, it was ages, how long ago? I don't know. It, it, it was just after we left Dennis, wasn't it, in 07? So it'd have been round about the Mayweather Pacquiao time, wouldn't it? Yeah, it, yeah, it was, it was. Cause Thirteen we years ago. But like, all I, all we wanted to do was just have a laugh with it, and you know, when it becomes something else, like, it, like they just had a different agenda to what, to what I wanted to do, and I helped them as much as I could. I introduced yeah. them to everyone that in the boxing world, and and, and good luck to them. They're doing a great job. Yeah. Them. It's great to see all the others coming, you know, doing the same as them because it's, 
it's easy to do because in the boxing world it's like it's like their own little community yeah what they don't realise is when they come out of that world and they go to say I don't know they go just go and have lunch in Queen Square in Bristol nobody would know who they were yeah and it's so you've got to just when you're doing anything even boxing like a lot of boxers probably have retired and well I know because like, I mix with them and speak to them every yeah. day but you know they just think that maybe boxing holds them a living well I was British champion or I was European champion and, and, and they, they feel a bit bitter but it's because boxing is such a hard game you've, you've just got to take it for what it is don't believe the bullshit and then get in try and earn a bit of money and get out yeah. but 90% of boxers won't earn a penny but you know just stop the smoke and mirrors and just tell tell the fucking truth that's what I do do you think there's a lot of bullshit that goes on in boxing Jane from promoters yeah well we're at Glyn Leach Boxing Monthly editor who's a very good friend of mine and right from the start me starting boxing when nobody wanted to know mm. anything about me um, yeah. Glyn always backed me and he said to me well if you a show he went we're just swimming in the sea of bullshit and I never forgot it never forgot it well, you're right because I see it now and it ain't, it ain't what it said on brochure. <laughs> I remember when I first met Dennis and he was he was saying, yeah, it's this, it's that. He was telling me all these stories and I was like, wow. And then I think after about two a month, I can remember sat in that office up in Sheffield and I was thinking, fucking hell, I keep ringing people here to sort of stuff and nobody's telling me fucking true. <laughs> Oh, it's just all about certain people, innit? So, it's not about them, it's... Yeah. No problem. Well, listen, thank you very much and God bless and I love you to bits, Jane. God bless and take care. Take care. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. What a lovely lass she is, Jane Couch. Uh, she loved this. If it weren't for Jane Couch, there wouldn't be no female boxers and she's been trapped poorly by the establishment yeah that's right you British Boxing Board of Control you fucking no good cunts if you got a problem fucking ring me up I ain't got a Boxing Board of Control licence do you mind sending fucking emails to Dennis Hobson complaining about what I say on this channel this is fucking my channel I can do what I want as long as I press certificate 18 and no videos for kids I can say what the fuck I want so fuck you, border control. Do you know what I mean? Sue me, sue me for fucking what? So, but getting back to Jane Couch, I think she's lovely. I think Jane Couch is a lovely, lovely lady, and I love her to bits. And I've seen all of her fights on YouTube. She's tough, very tough. Uh, I don't know if anybody's seen the. Fucking doing it. I don't know if anybody's seen the Jane Couch I don't know if anybody's seen the Jane Couch uh, video where she's with some they're in this beer garden and that this is <laughs> somebody says to me have you seen this I went no and this guy's there trying to punch her and all this and he's got his pint in his hand Jane's just gone BANG and bust his lip I think or his nose or something and he was like that <laughs> Go on Google, Google Jane Couch, YouTube, go have a look at what she's done. Pioneer for the sport of boxing, just like Ellie Setback, Coogan, James, people like that. They're pioneers for YouTubers. What we do today, uh, Jane's a pioneer. And you, there's other pioneers in boxing, the podcasts, you know, Boxing Asylum, Next Big Pod. There's podcasts out there, Terry's Pod's doing well. The Beautiful Podcast on Twitter. At The Beautiful Podcast. No, at Highfield Boxing, but YouTube I think it's Beautiful, The Beautiful Boxing or Beautiful Boxing. So I think that's about it. Yep, so peace out. Keep on trucking, keep sporting boxing. But like I said, all these promoters out there taking piss. Who cares? <laughs>